Hello, friends, and welcome back to Discover Christian Mysticism with John Adams. I'm John Adams. On today's episode, we have a special treat because today's episode is more Discover Christian Mysticism with my friend Jacob Sandigo. My friend Jacob will be talking to us about his experience as a person who was very involved with the New Age movement in California and how he met Jesus in and through and out of all of that. And then he'll also be sharing some stories of his spiritual travels during the pandemic and beyond. Jacob is a writer and a podcaster who produces and publishes spiritual content. And Jacob and I will be teaming up in the weeks and months to come to launch a project that I think is really cool. So we'll get into that in a later video. But for this episode, I just think it would be good for you to meet Jacob and to hear his story. You can find him on Substack at sonofthemoment.substack.com. It's probably the best place to encounter Jacob for yourself. And I really hope you enjoy this interview with somebody who you can just tell that God has been working very deeply and very personally in his life. So thank you again, Jacob, for doing this interview. And thank you to all of you for watching. I hope that our conversation is a blessing. All right, everybody. I'm here with my friend, Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Hey, John. Happy to be here. I've known Jacob virtually for a couple of years now. And the thing I like Jacob, about Jacob the most is that he's a spiritual traveler with a lot of curiosity and he's very interested in the, the mysticism and the spirituality surrounding Christ. And I can't wait to ask him some questions. So thank you for talking to me, Jacob. Um, uh, it was awesome because I feel everything kind of synced in the sense where right when I investigated Christian mysticism, you're the first thing to pop up. And I was like, <laughs> All right. Here's also like, and you know, like stuff that like was palpable and made sense, you know, and like was relatable. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me check this guy out. And I'm just glad we were able to connect and what we formed with the, with the group has just been awesome to be a part of. Well, it's an honor to have served you at that point in your spiritual journey. And once again, I apologize for the quality of that first video. <laughs> <laughs> And that was great. A lot of people, a lot of people found meaning in it. And so I, it's, it's an honor. All right, Jacob. Uh, I have a few questions. Number one, tell me about your spiritual history and where you're at now in your spiritual life. All right. So I guess from the very beginning, I was raised Catholic and more so for sake of appearances in the sense it was to appease my grandmother because she's an immigrant from Nicaragua and that's very much part of our tradition and culture. Yeah. Uh, and so we would only go for Easter, or let's say to, to mass. Right. And I remember I just had this experience in catechism that was pretty much, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way because it like seemed like anytime I asked a question, it was kind of shut down. And, and a lot of the kids were making fun of me in these classes. And, but my friend at the time, my best friend at the time was Muslim. And I remember asking, like, so what about him? He's treating me how they say Christ is supposed to be. And then he's like, oh, he's going to hell. So, and they didn't tell me why. And then they just yeah. like, so I was just like, I'm checked out from Christianity after that experience. Right. And so I would, I kind of automatically always fell in love with literature. And so writers and poets, they became my prophets. They became my little G gods, you know, I would just kind of like strive to emulate them and live their lifestyle and try to be the best writer I could and with that came a lot of fragmented worldviews right because who are you reading <laughs> well I mean very first their very first writer I ever fell in love with was Edgar Poe and Edgar Allan Poe oh, okay and I started getting into just darker stuff as a kid I don't know why I just kind of fell into this rut where I got like really down on myself and I was just really I don't want to say depressed but I was just really Felt, um, I don't know, I just felt like I was searching for more and it wasn't making, yeah. you know, even at a younger age, it just felt like, I don't know, kind of oppressive, this, this weight on me. I can't really explain it. And I just didn't like, I didn't really enjoy who I was. I wasn't happy in my, yeah. in my person. But then I started getting older and I'm like, oh, these guys are living wild lifestyles like Hunter S. Thompson, yeah. Jack Kerouac, the beat mix. I mean, stereotypical, but <laughs> so I was like, I went yeah. after those type of writers. <laughs> um, and I even went so far as to move to San Francisco for college just because I wanted to see all those old haunts of all my, like yeah. some of my, my favorite writers. And they kind of introduced me to Eastern mysticism 
or in, I guess Eastern spirituality, I should say. Yeah. And the different, you know, Buddhism and different, even some little bit of Hinduism and different schools of thought. But this was kind of under the guise of new age because the people I met were in like new age circles and that's kind of an open-ended definition. But it was, for me, it was basically circles that would get together and they would, you know, discuss life, do meditations, but it was centered around plant medicine. So like psychedelics or, but it was to me, the picking and choosing different spiritualities to best serve the, the person. And you don't really see it while you're in there, but regardless of if it's paying proper homage or respect to what, to the culture it's from, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know how to say it's like, it becomes a hyper sense, hyper focused, like diving into self, but you are also at the same time thinking I'm loving and accepting of everybody. And yeah, da, da, da. Uh, I mean, not to paint everyone, but that's kind of just what I noticed being in there. And, and Christianity was a big no, no. Like it was like Jesus, yeah. he's either a mushroom, he's a guru, he's a teacher, he's anything but the son of God. And he's a mix of all different types of myths and legends. And he's at best, he's an avatar that can visit you on a trip and tell you some good stuff, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So I was really, you know, I kind of fell into like just that type of thought. And at the same time, like I was doing these plant medicines and different things. And I was under this, I was saying, oh, this is expanding consciousness and the name of writing. And I didn't see that some of this stuff was addictive patterns, you know. Oh, yeah. So I kind of fell into like, especially heavily smoking marijuana and microdosing and different things and Again, it was also kind of interesting because at this in these paths, you're like saying, oh, I am God, I am abundance, I am wholeness. But then at the same time, I got burnt holes from cigarettes on my, I can barely get up in the morning. Uh, I'm probably drinking a little too much. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not loving who I am, you know, like I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'm God, but I'm broken, like completely shattered. And I remember I just picked up, I started picking up the Bible again for the vain reason of writing better poetry. <laughs> Cause I remember I heard Bob Dylan, I fell in love with Bob Dylan's music on a road trip. And he kept saying like, uh, they kept talking about how he pulls from the Bible. You know? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, let me read the Bible again. And I was like, well, this is not what I remember it being or not remember. Like I was really compelled at this guy named Jesus of Nazareth. Like what he was saying, yeah. was like, this, is, this is wild. Um, and I don't know, just a lot of stuff happened to me where it put me in a really dark place. And I think a lot of that stuff that I was doing kind of led me to like a fragmented, I don't know, mind. I was just kind of, I don't know. I just want to say I was really down and out. And I, I remember one night I was just like, what is this? Like, what, what are you doing? I was just kind of having a crisis, you know, <laughs> I was just like, what, what, what is all this? What does all this mean? Like, where are you going in life? And I just was like, let me just call it to Christ. I just felt like what's, what's going to happen. Like, you know, it was kind of like almost like, I don't know. I just know what to expect. I was like, let me pray. I haven't prayed really to anything else. I mean, like I, I prayed in the new age to a God that is unknown, no name or anything. Yeah. Like that. I specifically prayed to Jesus. And then I was just ambushed with this love that was just mm. so pure and just so tangible. And it felt like I was just being like hugged, but then slowly let go like it just and that sounds kind of weird but I just felt like gunk was leaving my body I just felt like all yeah. that years of trauma to my body and to my like mind was just kind of leaving me and then I decided I was like okay I'll read the bible some more keep praying yeah and then my first week as a Christian was kind of wild because I kept reading the scriptures about fasting so I just kind of went on a three-day fast that first week and I really just kind of sought solitude and time with with Christ. Um, uh, and it was just a very powerful experience. It was kind of like getting a download on why I had the trauma and different stuff in my past that like why I'd been trying to escape from it and different things. And I just kind of took it all to him in prayer and was able to heal. And then from then on, just kind of like I was able to get rid of those addictions and then just gradually go into community and then start like, I'm not ashamed to talk about Jesus, you know, so like kind of became my life to follow Christ, you know, as like as his disciple. And of course I have other interests, but I mean, like yeah. the center of my life is following, following Christ now. I always get nervous kind of talking about, about this. I don't know. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. So, um, where are you at now with your faith in? I feel like I had a period where I had to like go into more growth just because I, I lost my dad pretty unexpected and I had this very powerful experience by his bedside praying. So I kind of felt that that was me, like, because I had that experience, I was like, okay, I don't have any room to be sad or to like, I kind of like felt guilty for having these emotions afterwards. And I, I kind of did not bring that to Jesus. So I felt like I've been, yeah. since then I've been really just going deeper into like, not just saying I trust you, but yeah. things fully bringing my trust, like in a full embodied trust versus just intellectually. Cause it's easy when things are nice, but this when, when it's, tough waters is harder to yeah to have that keep that faith you know yeah what got you interested in in mystical christianity well it was probably my first visit to the bookstore to check out the christian section <laughs> yeah because i'd never never ever checked out it christian section and i kind of just immediately i picked up augustine merton and St. Francis was like the first three books I read. That'll Um, get you there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, because there were some things that were positive about what I experienced on trips, but I was trying to make sense of them. Like, so why, because I've heard some theology where it's like the body's a curse, the earth is a curse. And to me, that didn't make sense because, you know, new age kind of thought was that yeah. You can learn so much from nature, but also it kind of went to the point of deifying like nature, like worshiping nature sometimes. But I was like, I, to me, creation's good. It's just we sometimes don't use it to the best or we try to take advantage and manipulate it. So then I was really St. Francis helped me with seeing how he was just kind of in awe of everything because he's like, who yeah. is this God that would make this for us all to experience and to be a part of? And I, I've had, I mean, I had great experiences going back to certain churches because, but I just felt there was some, like, well, I guess I also kind of initially made me going back to mass was all the, a lot of the mystics are Catholic or yeah. Eastern Orthodox. And I kind of had a powerful experience in the church where I remember I just started praying the Jesus prayer. And that was actually what brought me back to mass because I was still hesitant because of my past there. And, and I remember I kept praying like for like a couple of weeks. I'm like, where do you want me to go? What church do you want me to go? I've been church hopping for a while. And I just internally heard, go to mass. And I was like, can I go to mass at six o'clock at night? Can I go to mass right now? I looked up, there was a mass down the street at six 30. So I went and it was, I don't know, something about receiving communion again. That was really nice. And I just felt, okay. And at that time I was still learning to kind of get over some addiction. So I kind of went every day just to like that structure, you know, I remember I started praying the Jesus prayer one time right before work, San Francisco. And it was before adoration, before the sacrament. And I I can't really articulate this experience that well, other than I had planned to be there for an hour. I ended up there, I think it was three or four hours, but it kind of went by in a blink of an eye. And it, it was just like being, the closest I can explain is if you ever read The Cloud of Unknowing, it was like, it was like being in the cloud, I guess. Or no, it was just like, yeah. I got to say it, other than, it was very powerful and why I feel, I don't think I'm anyone special to have experienced it. I feel like why I experienced it was God was like, oh, all the wonderful things you saw during a trip and you were just enamored by it. I can do that like that. Like that's nothing to me. Like not that he was bragging, maybe he was, I don't know, but it's just like yeah. to say like, I, I'm more powerful than any of those experiences you had put as like the most powerful experience, yeah. spiritual experiences in the past. And like, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> no, it does. I mean, he made the plants, right? So uh, sometimes yeah. he has to flex and remind us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they walk on water real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that as a, as a writer type and as an avid reader, you probably have different Bible verses or, or quotes from different Christian writers that sort of guide your journey through the world. And so I, I was going to ask you, what are the quotes? What are the verses that that are stuck in your head right now? I think always the one I go back to a lot is be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. I think that was something I always go back to just because it 
to really like because I think you just did a video on this, right? About the how hard it is to do mindful yeah. or how to do like meditation and how hard it is to be alone with your thoughts. And I feel like for instance, when I did other meditations, I felt I was escaping things versus this time I was um meeting a presence and it was oh yeah it was it was a communion and so that was hard to not hard it was hard at first but so many wonderful things have happened and just starting my day being still even if it's five ten minutes before I go to work or whatever you know it's just making that set time I think pretty much also always the I'm the bread of life and for a world that hungers for satisfaction I think is the message version of that scripture And that, that one, just because I feel like all these spiritual journeys I went on to, and especially when I took that gap year to travel and cross country and went all over, I found right at home, you know? So like, not to say that those, I had great experiences and not diminishing those, but everything I was looking for was right where Jesus met me and that happened to be at home. So I just felt like mm. that one, I always go back to it. And even the, the, the one of holy ground, I think that's a good reminder is, not all of some of us have had wonderful experiences in a church, traveling abroad or whatever, but mine was on my patio. So like yeah. that to me is holy ground to me. Like, and so I kind of go back to that. Um, and and uh, Moses too, when um, God said to Moses, I'm paraphrasing, but where he said, where he said, Hey, we need your help basically. And he's like, all right, you're going to do it, but I'm going to be with you. Yeah. And so it kind of like reminds me of Jesus where he says, you know, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And, just to always remember that there, there's part of the gospel, or I mean, a huge chunk of it is the act of faith of going outside of yourself and helping others, where I feel mm. like when that new age, it was all about, let me be center of the universe. Mm. Even though you don't, they don't say that's the goal, but I feel like that's a lot of the end results. Like I'm so hyper-focused on yourself that you yeah. forget, and self-care is important, but you can forget, like it's so much more being a part of the body of Christ and helping others is so much more, I feel um, just something to strive for. I want to, I want to ask you about your spiritual travels in a second, but what would you say to somebody right now who hears what you're saying, but is maybe, I don't know, resistant to Christianity because of maybe past experiences or their way of seeing the world and, and maybe is resistant to the idea that you would want to move from kind of a new age spirituality back into old world Christianity. Um, well, I, I think there's, I mean, I understand it. I mean, I, cause I've lived that in yeah. a sense, everyone experiences different, but I think we have, you know, some of us may have issues with family our our friends or certain things people will let us down you know like maybe you, that friend you thought was going to be with you for life ends up backstabbing you or your dad isn't who you expected a dad to be and like you're kind of searching for that father figure or maybe you had abusive thing or something right there's all different things that make you res- maybe resistant to trusting people but I, I personally just found that I can always come to Christ that's someone that's going to be there Jesus is always going to be there and if you had told me that reality, that was it now, three years now, two, two, three years now, I would say you're crazy. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and it wasn't because I learned anything through a church and I'm not, you know, diminishing churches, but I just went to him directly. He says, he says, come and follow me. And I think that's an invitation that is from 2000 years ago till now. Yeah. Um, he even tells the disciples, come and see, like, this is where I'm going to, this is where I'm living. This is what I'm about. And I just... I, I mean, I just was talking with him and he was there for me. And since then, I've just seen his words come true yeah. um, just in my life and those around me. So I just feel he's the guy to go to. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. So you'd say it's worth, it's, it's worth checking him out. I would say, yeah. I mean, yeah. in the new age, you usually try anything. You usually try yeah. anything. Like it's always, let me hear the new latest meditation, the latest plant ceremony, the latest dance thing. So like, what, what do you have to lose with going to Jesus to see who he says he is. Yeah. When I met you, I think it was during the pandemic and, but you were not quarantined at home. You were driving around and visiting mystics and monks all over the country. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't tell me, but yeah, I was. You rebel. 
there's probably a statute of limitations for that. But what what prompted you to set out on those journeys? Where did you go? What was your goal? And what did you learn? Well, I think at that time I had been so, because I had done that time where it was just me and Jesus on retreats. And so I was, I just felt like I needed to learn from others that had been walking with them a lot longer than I have. Yeah. And at that time I was really interested in the monks. I actually thought I was going to be possibly a monk because I feel like I was what. <laughs> um, one of those I, I've heard of many times where monks where they they were just kind of so disgusted how they like lived and or yeah. they're being hard on themselves so they're just like I'm going the polar opposite like the most extreme opposite right yeah um, so I think it was a little bit about that just learning and also just seeing what is it like to be a monk today versus yeah. you know way back when the desert father and mother because I was influenced by the desert father mother's writing for sure. Um, and I just was kind of like, yeah, I just wanted to learn from the guys. And it was interesting because I kind of went to, even though they were Catholic, I went to different, like there's traditional mass, there's the new Novus Ordo. So I kind of went to different types of spirituality within the church there, or the Catholic church. And one thing I learned right away is like, okay, these are just normal people. <laughs> mm. I thought you might have like, oh, are these like floating angels? Are they modern day sages? And, um, like one, one example I thought was funny was when we were praying, I think was it was a matin since the last, that the last, yeah. forget the night prayer. Yeah. And it was before the blessed sacrament and we're praying and I'm like one of the, I'm like the last guy in there. And then one of the monks taps me on the shoulder. He's like, okay, what can I get you to drink? And I was thinking I'll have water. And he's like, it's a feast day. So we're going to, we have a full bar. I'm going to make you a Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, let's go have a Manhattan. And then, so he makes me Manhattan and they it went from spirituality talks to being just like, all right, what's going on in the world? Like talking about politics, talking about everything, like yeah. talking about movies. And I'm like, you guys watch movies? And he's like, yeah, we have a TV. <laughs> <You know>, like, <laughs> so that, that was at a monastery. Yeah. So that was, they were, they were a, a really, it was only three uh, brothers because yeah. they were traditional and that's not as big a, in the Catholic church anymore the Latin mass. So it was only okay. three guys and they had a brother Chewy who was a dog that wandered onto the property was a honorary brother. <laughs> okay. What uh, state, but, what state was that in? Florida. So you went to Florida to a monastery with three monks who do the traditional mass and a dog yes. <laughs> and it was a feast day. And after Manhattan's, they made you a Manhattan. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> My guess is the kind of experiences you were looking for to write about with all of your new age exploration don't even come close to that. That whole thing right there is just a perfect short story. <laughs> no, exactly. And actually the abbot, he has one of my favorite quotes. I should have mentioned it, that he ever, it's so simple, but profound to me was where I forgot what I asked him, <laughs> but his response yeah. was how, how, I want to say how scared, but how, yeah, yeah, and how afraid we are to be present to one another. Mm. Um, and uh, and this, especially with all this distractions right at our fingertip, even though it's, yeah. we think we're being present, but are we really type thing? Yeah. Um, and I guess to be vulnerable to one another. And I was like, oh, that's, I mean, it's so simple, but it's something I always kind of try to remember what I'm writing actually. To yeah. Hopefully mm. connect with people. So where else have you been? Like what other kind of spiritual communities have you visited? I know you went to Hawaii and I know you did the Camino. So Oh yeah, the Hawaii, the Hawaiian one, that was that was fun. That was with a he's a originally I think a Benedictine monk and then he became a Eastern or Eastern Byzantine monk priest. So he went they left him they sent him out of the monastery from New Zealand to be in Sacramento. And we became friends and then he invited me to help him out on a trip to Hawaii where he needed help just serving and stuff like that. Okay. And so it was a nine day retreat. And this was like, I guess the first time I kind of got to process what was going on with, with my dad, like, you know, my life after my dad passed. Yeah. And, and it was just funny because I was, I was so happy to like, just kind of relax and be with my thoughts, you know? And the monk was always just, he was going, he was so stressed the whole trip and it kind of threw me off because we're on mm -hmm. Hawaii, we're on an island. 
it's and you're you with a monk faster. right yeah yeah <laughs> and you can't go faster than i think 30 miles an hour on the island yeah but he's like oh i gotta i gotta bless this i gotta do rights i gotta do this and he's like stressed <laughs> i gotta get my daily prayers and then we went to this shop where the motto was slow yourself down yeah you experience so much more and I met a person we were talking and, and so I kind of just was like ever since then the trip just went smoothly right and, I, and finally he's driving his he's got white knuckles on the steering wheel and I'm like padre slow yourself down bro I gave him the shaka yeah and then I put on a James Taylor and yeah he just started vibing and then he was just like chill the rest of the trip and then we ended up having a great time and yeah going on like going to see the volcanoes and whatnot and, sure uh, Met, actually, I met a guy named Ken, who I love, Ken. I went to the oldest church on the island, and we were talking about, he was like in New Age circles, and he's like, yeah, I used to be this New Age surfer. And then one day, then one day Jesus came up to me and said, school's out, brah. Got to come follow me. <laughs> and, and so, and then he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I went, this New Age lady came up to our church, and her dog pooped on the front lawn. And she was like trying to tell me, like, God's in everything. God, you're God, me, God. This poop is God. She thought it was a divine revelation. I'm like, and then she walked away. I'm like, wait, that, that's a fine. Like, pick, pick it up. It's not a revelation, <laughs> you know? And so that was, a fun, that was a fun trip. It doesn't matter what you call it. Pick up after your dog. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is your, your explorations of the spiritual world, and I mean that literally, you've gone places and you've met people. If you're stuck in your mundane life with your mundane self and you want to get closer to God, and be some kind of radically transformed, enlightened person. It doesn't sound to me like the life of the monk is necessarily a guarantee for that. <laughs> you still end up, you're still a person. You're just, you just got a different rhythm for your life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's not to belittle it at all. It's just, I think a lot of people fantasize about, you know, some kind of spiritual seclusion or that you can organize your life in a certain way so that you're actually closer to God. But in your experience, what you're saying is they're just people and, and you might be living different. You might have more space in your day for reflection or for connecting with God, but you're still worried about the same things we're all worried about. And God's still God and you're still you. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you ever experienced, like if you've ever taken, I mean, I know it's harder probably as a dad and a pastor, but to take it like a, a retreat, just you, at least for me, I've, when I've had these, you know, powerful experiences in prayer or just, you know, consolation or whatever it is, one of the first things I want to do is run to people, like not to tell them, Hey, God told me this. Right. But just to be like, I'm usually refreshed. And just, I want to give that love I received to other people. I'm always excited to be like, Oh, I can't wait to see, the, you know, my, my girlfriend, my, my best friend, my brother, whatever. Right. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know. It's just, I would be, I would miss sharing those moments or I guess that, love that I'm given, you know? So the life of the hermit is not for you then? Yeah, I think, I mean, it has, its, I thought it was, but um, I mean, even like my favorite experience about traveling is the people I'll never probably see again, but I can never forget just yeah. those interactions, you know? So where's your next adventure? I guess, well, I guess, I mean, this week. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to the Christian Renewal Center because my girlfriend, she's doing like a girl's weekend. So I'm like, that's, I can do my little weekend, you know? <laughs> so I'm going, it's in Oregon and I'm staying there for a few days in the woods. And then I'm going to check out the Benedictine monastery that also is a brewery uh -huh. <laughs> in, in yeah, Oregon. Yeah, the Benedictines get down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and they have like a huge library. So I'm probably going to be geek geeking out because it's an enormous library of just Christian material. Yeah. A lot of awesome. writers, I guess, have taken sabbaticals there to finish books and stuff. Send me pictures of the spines of any books you think I'd like. I'll try. Actually, yeah. you have to wait. <laughs> you have to you have to wait a couple of weeks because I now have this this dumb phone. Oh, good for uh, you. But I'm taking uh, I've taken my my old school camera. So. Well, don't waste film on on book spines. Just remember the highlights and and, and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> all right no for sure yeah yeah film is valuable these days jacob where can people find your your writing and your podcasts and your content most of it's just on my sub stack which is 
son of the moment. If you just type on son of the moment at substack.com. Okay. Um, son of the that, moment at substack.com. Or yeah, I hope. Or, <laughs> just, right. Go to substack and type in search for son of the moment. And you'll find, you'll find Jacob and, and his content. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to go. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's awesome to introduce Jacob to you because pretty soon Jacob and I will be announcing some cool projects that you can participate in. And so look forward to that. So thanks for sharing, man. And thanks for being generous with your story and with your time and have a good trip. Thank you for, for joining me and thanks for talking to me and we'll see y'all next time till Christ is formed in us. Shalom. Shalom.